To reduce the dependence, Mongolia has joined with China to build its own hydroelectric dam. This new facility shows one path that might lead to a measure of energy independence. But this still depends on development assistance from Mongolia's neighbors and could have other hidden costs if the fragile ecology of the steppe were disrupted. All the way across the country to the east, in Sukhbatar Aymak, is Baran Ut. Again, because of the distance, the eastern part of Mongolia has its own power grid. This region also has its own special needs. <laughs> Thirty-five percent of the population of our Baurun Ur has an income lower than the minimum living standard. My action plan's main objective is to provide citizens of Sukhbata Aima with a safe and healthy environment for living. Here, too, the energy project has made a difference. We have poverty in our province. I think there are some reasons like the earlier socialist system and now living in transition to a market system for 10 years. Our infrastructure is not so developed. The location of our province is isolated and the global economic crisis is affecting our development. I consider that the electricity is crucial and a foundation for poverty reduction by providing opportunities to develop infrastructure. There is one line installed to each household on a metered system and people pay for the energy use. I think this is a big step for nomadic people who are not able to live in apartments. Electricity supply is crucial for everyone. I think the Mongolians have a lot to show to other countries, to other distribution systems, on how do you go about it in setting up consumer service centers? How do you link that to improve revenue collection system? While everyone needs and deserves access to energy, some people in Mongolia live very far from the power plants. Mongolians have traditionally burned animal dung for heating their tents and cooking their food. Having some electricity could mean retaining a lot more organic matter in the ecosystem. Small-scale solar and wind energy systems for isolated GARE families represents one innovative way to address these problems and to deal with the isolation. I bought this solar panel about a year ago for 210,000 tugrits, together with a battery. There have been many changes. We can use light now, and we can watch television to get information. I'm very satisfied. Our life is getting better, and we can get daily news now. Larger scale wind and solar systems could provide solutions for remote communities and enterprise scale development, but again require significant investment. Companies which are fi financially already very much strained, you know, the, the coal, uh, coal based uh, power generating companies, you know, the mines, you know, that are being producing the coal which are already financially strained, 
will have to somehow finance the production of the renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So I think when we are talking about these big issues, we have to make very clear uh, in the global scale uh, who will be paying for mm -hmm. this. At this moment, uh, the current tariffs do not cover the costs. And uh, the World Bank conducted a study in 2007 uh, which uh, concluded that uh, the current tariffs for electricity and heat needs to be increased at least uh, by 60% in order to make energy sector financially viable. The most difficult thing is that people don't understand the energy sector issues. People are used to buying power and heat at low tariff, and they can't get rid of their socialist way of thinking. We are now working to bring the tariff up to a realistic level, where it enables cost recovery. But we do face a lot of objections from the general public. What if the price were to go up? That would be hard. No, the tariff should go down. While the lost revenue project went some way to improve efficiency and increase revenue, more is still needed. It was a very modest project. It was a $30 million project. But the future requires at least another $150 million project to be able to deal with Ulaanbaatar alone. Mongolia has many choices to make. Decentralized, clean, renewable energies would seem to be abundant and well-suited to serve the Mongolian's lifestyle. The continuous need for investment to maintain aging infrastructure is in many ways impoverishing. Finding a way to get beyond this to an understanding of the long-term value of nature in which Mongolia is clearly wealthy can help Mongolia take the next step to its energy future.